All right, guys, uh, thanks so much for coming. My name is Ty from tableflipfoundry.com. I do professional pre-supports for resin 3D printing. Uh, I get a question pretty often about uh, how do I do a base or will this large object fit, uh, you know, will this large object print or this large base print? Something with a large flat surface. And I get this question pretty often. And I find myself having to explain something that I call the double row method. And trying to use words to explain it can be a little difficult. So I uh, decided to make a video for you guys. So let's go ahead and have a look here at Lychee Slicer, which is what we use. And we're going to go ahead and bring in a base. Now you guys will recognize this if you're familiar with our bases or our... Uh, our brand. This is the base for Puck the Adventurer. So if you were a member of the, the painting contest, you'll know that you had to probably do the supports on this base yourself. So today we're going to fix that. Uh, so I shouldn't have to explain too much about orientation and all that stuff. This is something you're going to want to um, kind of resolve on your own. But what we're going to do is just set up this file to start to start doing supports. I tilt it a little bit right we want we want to orient our file properly I turn off all of these settings and I lift and add a raft to the object which we have to do and now we're gonna go in to supports so here's the double row method <clears throat> when we're anchoring a base or a large flat object we know that this object is going to be sitting flat on a tabletop or, or some such. And we know that the amount of damage done to the bottom of this as a result of larger supports uh, isn't so important. It's mostly hidden. But there is one aspect of this model that will be seen, and that is this bottom, this bottom line right here is really crisp and clean. And when it's sitting flat, if it looks like a little sawtooth, and I'm sure if you've 3D printed bases before, you've seen that little sawtooth. Um, that can be a result of removing the base from supports and you kind of get that. Now that can be easily resolved if you put a piece of sandpaper down, sand the bottom a little bit, clean it up. You're good, but if we can mitigate that as much as possible, give ourselves the least amount of damage to the model as we can, that's what we're gonna shoot for. So here's the double row method. The first thing you do is you go and pick a medium support. The mediums I use are 0.28 millimeters. And we're going to start at this bottom edge and we're going to find that middle support. Now see how my tip bled over the edge of this, of this model. When I pull this off, I'm going to have like a little sawtooth there. So it's really important that I am very precise about how I place that support so that it doesn't bleed over the, the lip of the, of the edge of the base there. Now, I tend to move quickly and I'll just do a bunch and I'll find that some of them bleed. If you have the pro version of Lychee, you'll be able to go in, hit space bar, click the tip and actually move it while holding control and clean it up yourself. So this is something I'll be doing often. You can only do this with the pro version of Lychee though. Uh, and then another pro tip for you, if your base is perfectly symmetrical, symmetric, and you haven't rotated or tweaked it too much other than just tilting it up, there is a feature in Lychee that I have learned recently that will make this twice as fast, literally twice as fast for you. So I used to just draw the line around the outside edge all by hand, and now I only have to do half. In Lychee, there is an option under Manual Supports right here where it says Mirror. And if you click X you're gonna find that it will place two supports for you as long as the model is symmetric. So here I still wanna correct this because I did it wrong and we're gonna start placing some supports here. So at this bottom part, we want very dense support uh, locations. So we want a lot of supports very close together. If you have ever printed a base and found that the bottom of the base had this weird little oval shape, like a saggy shape. It's because it was under supported when it was placed. So unfortunately when you edit, your edits aren't 
done mirrored. So we have to go back in and clean these up a little bit. And what I'll do is I'm going to put this file into the uh, into the folder with the cones of calibration so that you can download this base with Puck from now on. <clears throat> you can also get this from Velrock Arts, um, My Mini Factory. He hosts this base for the contest. Okay, so I'm going to continue on and from the bottom portion of this base, which is the most important that we get right, we're going to have very high density supports working our way up here. And I'm going to try to do this from an angle where I can see I can see my supports bleed over so I don't have to go in and edit anything here. And I'm just going to be very particular about my placement. And you'll notice that the very bottom, the bottom most portion, I have a really high density. These are really close together. And as I start to work my way up, I'm going to gradually loosen the density just a bit. This bottom third of the model is the most important. So this is where everything is held up um, from, from the very bottom of the model all the way up. It's held up from this bottom third. So it's really important that we stay relatively dense here at this bottom third. And then once we start to get past that third or so, and you can eyeball, it doesn't have to be perfect. But once you start to get past that third or so, you can start spreading these out. It is a pain point for me when the supports are too close together all the way up the the base and I'll explain that here in a moment so once we finish this you'll notice I'm starting to spread out a little bit more and then my support placement is less important the higher up we go I still don't want to bleed over the edge but I don't have to be right on the edge anymore here now you'll notice I have a big gap between these supports and I have no gap between these supports if I were to do this type of density all the way around, there would be no way for isopropyl or water to get inside this cavity here. And it would create a little bubble. And what you'll find is that your, your base, when you throw it into your cleaner or whatever you do, will float on top and it won't sink. And that's because air can't escape and isopropyl can't get inside the little bubble we've created. So what I do is I leave a big enough gap for, for all of our cleaner to get inside this cavity. Um, and it's also less and less necessary to have these supports at the top. What we're doing is we're maintaining this round shape all the way around. So it's important that we at least have structure going all the way around the base. So this is our first row, but we call this the double row method. The idea behind this first row is we're using smaller tips on our supports to maintain the cleanness of this line. But we also know that these medium supports aren't going to be strong enough to hold up the object that we are trying to support. So we need to add those big anchors uh, as well. But we're going to do that right behind the first row, and that'll be our second row. So we're going to go up here, grab heavies. The heavies that I use are all 0.4 millimeters. And we're going to step in here, and we're going to get real close to those, those first supports. Not right on them, but real close. And we are going to create a second row. They don't have to be quite as dense as the first row here, but we're gonna create a second row just behind the first row. And we only have to do this for the bottom third of the model. So you can see here, I stopped here. So this first row keeps a nice clean edge and it will hold up a bit of the model. And the second row with these heavies jumps right in after work, afterwards and starts doing the hard work of holding on to this model. From here, all we have to do is scatter a few heavies around this bottom third or so. And this is where we want a sort of medium high, not high density like the bottom, but like more of a medium density in this bottom third. And then the second two thirds or so, you can have a much looser density. We don't need a ton of supports at the top. And there's our base. 
Super easy, super simple. That's all it takes. This base will come out nice and around. It'll have a really nice edge around the bottom side. So when you lay it flat, you're not seeing the little sawtooth on the bottom. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and save this file here. That's the puck base. Our base is done. Most times it'll only take a few seconds. If you, once you have this, the system down, we're going to look at a little bit bigger base. The process is exactly the same on an even bigger base. So this is pucks, uh, 200% scale base. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up a little bit. And then the process is exactly the same. We're going to go in, turn on uh, mirror X mirror. And this is where I would go in. I'm going to do this quickly. I'm not going to clean it up here on camera because it'll take too long. Uh, but here is where I would go with with high density supports um, for a ways. And then as I start to get more around the outside perimeter uh, in this bottom third, I will start to space these out a little bit more. I could be a little looser on the density. And then as I get further and further up, I can get looser and looser on the density all the way around. Technically, we don't require supports all the way up the model like I'm doing here, but I like to ensure that our round base stays round. And the way that I can help ensure that is by securing supports all the way this round around this round edge. All right, so here you can see I'm starting to get real loose as far as the density on these. And here's our first row. A little higher density. Looks like I might have missed one here. A little higher density on the bottom. Um, and then we gradually get less and less dense. We need to start our second row here. So we're going to go to our heavy supports. We're going to start throwing heavy supports right behind the mediums. And we're going to work our way up this third. And again, I can sort of gradually space out the density. It's just that bottom section. So there's our bottom third or so. And then we're going to start placing our scattered supports around. And remember, we want a slightly higher amount of them in the bottom third. And then we can sort of uh, just, just scatter a few around just to hold it up. Make sure that the suction forces don't pull it off the build plate. And there we go. There is base two. Only takes a, about a minute or so. Um, the bigger the base, the longer it takes, obviously. So we are going to look at one more object because bases aren't the only thing that might have a flat bottom that we want to support. So we're going to have a quick look at a file from one of our partner creators, Infinite Dimensions. We're going to look at some of their objects from their, looks like some ancient burial grounds that they've got. So here's a great example of a flat bottom object that we may have to support. And in order to do that, we're going to use the uh, double row method. The thing about this is it's not perfectly round. And so the shape could require some additional considerations. And I want to make sure we address those now. Anytime that we have a tilted object like this, that is not just one round shape, we have multiple low spots that require the exact same considerations. So if we are placing mediums on the lowest point here in a high density like pattern, it's the same as the base that we just worked on. We just have to follow the shape around. But then let's say we start to work our way up and we know we can start getting less dense up here. But then we come right back down to another point. We need that high density at these low points. Here's another one. So we could go less dense up here, but then once we get down to this low point, we have to continue our high density placement. And then as we start to work our way up, we can spread out our density. And then on this low flat point here, we're going to want a little higher density. And then as we work our way up, we can, we can start relaxing our density again. So I hope that makes sense. Each one of these can be considered a low point in the model, the bottom of the base. And we need to make sure in order to keep that shape from sagging, that we're adding that super high density um, placement on the bottom. 
So here's another place. I would want to make sure that I get really good density and shape there. And then the rest of this, we would just sort of work our way up and all the way around. And then same as before, we're going heavies right behind it. And you would just continue, in this case, I would continue the heavies all the way up the row. And I would finish, I would finish the heavies somewhere about a third here. So I would stop around this area, but I would have a nice row of heavies to follow up all of this. And then I would scatter my, my heavies in a, a little higher density than the rest. And I would then finish up the rest with a bunch of heavies just to add support. Uh, I'm kind of placing them willy nilly super quickly. You can be structured if you want. If you want to follow the grid and do every other, you know, one, you can do that. How you place those is kind of entirely up to you. As long as you have enough to hold up the model, you're okay. Um, but that's it. Very simple. You're going to use mediums for the first row. You're going to use heavies right behind them to do all of the heavy lifting. And then the bottom third is the most important. We want our highest density of supports in that area. And then we can gradually work our way up to a lower density of supports at the bottom. Uh, obviously, the keyword of the day is density. So we want to make sure um, that we're getting those the, the groupings tight enough or spaced out enough for what we're looking to do. Uh, follow this method, you will definitely have good bases by the time you're done. I hope this was helpful and uh, you can visit our website um, and join our Discord and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitch and do all of the social media stuff. Uh, if you ever want to learn more, I'm probably going to be putting together these short class videos here and there, just some things that a lot of people are asking questions about and it's easier to just watch a quick video. So. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, you found this educational. Uh, see you soon. Bye.